62, the record will be altered. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion, more in pew. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, um, I have pleasure in standing and speaking to the Crown Minerals Protecting of World Heritage Sites Amendment Bill tonight in its first and hopefully last reading. Ah. Mr Speaker, the, what an honour for me it is to take a lead call on behalf of the government, on yep. behalf of the people of Westland, the people yes. of Westland who didn't have a voice in the preparation of this right. bill. And as my colleague across the House what? said, this bill does send a signal. Well, I've got a signal for the other side of the House from the West Coast, and it says, hands off. Mr Speaker, the purpose of this bill is to take World Heritage Status land and place it into Schedule 4, sir. I have no problem with the Tongariro National Park. It's already a national park. That's 796 square kilometres. And the sub-Antarctic islands, sir, 764 square kilometres. No problem with that. Where I do have a problem, sir, is Tiwahi Ponamu. 26,000 square kilometres, and that area is made up of a large part of Fiordland and Westland. It is already managed by the Department of Conservation. It is already protected by the Conservation Act. It has huge guardianship, and we respect that, sir. But these areas in Westland are where I have the greatest concern. There are currently 30 mining licences active on the, this land, or overlap this land. 25 of those are currently being worked. The bulk of those, the bulk of them, sir, are below the mean high water mark. At high tide, all evidence of them are gone. But this is a lazy piece of legislation, sir. It inserts seven words. Seven words into the Crown Minerals Act of 1991, and I doubt the member who proposed this bill has even thought about the impacts. There's a couple of operations in South Westland that clearly haven't been considered. The opportunity for Te Runanga Omakafio, Mr. Mr Speaker, they have a proposal to retrieve Aotea stone, very special to them and known as Hini Aotea. She's a very special healing stone, and it presents an opportunity for Macafio in South Westland. 170 hectares of their land overlaps into this proposal. They also have a proposal for a gold mining operation down there, sir. Very little else is on the horizon for Macafio. But this government has faith in the potential of the West Coast, yeah. and it's invested yeah. in the development of its regional growth study. This is a major economic development and exists in, within the tourism sector, and there is a whole lot of packages being worked on now. We've been working on this for over a year, sir. A big part of tourism, sir, is about being able to get there, That's and right. for those people that may not appreciate it, it can rain on the West Coast, and when it does, we have our rivers and roads under threat. But thanks to the Minister for Transport, he does keep our highways open. But, sir, if we cannot guarantee access, we are struggling to encourage the investment that we need in the built infrastructure and, and the um, places for people to do and stay. But that only matters, sir, if they can get there. And one of the problems that we've got with this bill is that it ceases all ability for quarrying and for gravel extraction. So when you want to maintain a road or a river, I'm sorry, but now on the west coast, you've got a 350-kilometre round trip to cart a, a truckload of rock. How many times are you going to need to do that to make any significant work on a piece of road or a river? So under this proposal, sir, gravel extraction and quarrying ceases. All mining, active mining permits, they're stopped. Te Runanga o Makafio, I'm sorry, but all of your plans are now in the bin. The growing schist business that has been developing over years, sorry, that's all stopped. Outrageous. Industrial and building rock Outrageous. business, Sorry, it's all over. Everything you've invested in that business, sorry, it's all over. 
intergenerational farms. We've got a family, five generations, who have grazing licences in South Westland. Oh. Sorry, guys, Ruth wants those. Order. There is no. Gra oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, well, I'm, I'm now. I'm now. I'm now going to ask the member on my left, who's trying to assist me, I'm sure, uh, to, if she really wants an answer that is 33 years. Um, but but the, I'm now going to ask the member, I'm now going to ask the member to call members by appropriate names. Maureen Pugh. Appreciate that, sir. I'm sorry, but Ms Dyson wants your land, West Coasters. Oh. There is no grandfather clause oh. built into this bill. That means that the day after Royal Ascent, all of that activity ceases, and there is no compensation. Oh. So, Doc, I'm sorry, if you want to maintain your tracks or protect a hut, sorry, there's no material. You've got to go all the way to Whararoa to get it. This issue, sir, cuts to the heart of all that is dear to those cuts who to live the in the West Coast, and it's an insult. Who are you to tell us? that all we have maintained and protected for generations is overnight out of bounds, locked up, untouchable. It's bureaucrats and do-gooders who don't even live on the coast, who have probably never spent any time there or even been there, that are always trying to tell us how to treat our land. We have kept our native forest intact. Where is yours who live in the clear, felled concrete jungles? This is theft, Mr Speaker. If you want to rob us of the right to live by and on the land that we have managed for generations, then uh, this bill is going to do it. But nobody talked to anyone on the West Coast. The proposer of this bill didn't talk to local iwi, did not even talk to the mayor of the district. The mayor of the Western District has 13 per cent of available um, land. Or, order. I'm, I'm now going to ask Mr Bailey to go and sit in his seat because his interjections are coming through the microphone system and, and uh, it's causing complaints, at least from me. I'm slightly deaf and it's getting very loud. <laughs> Mr Bailey. Your, your seat. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, no one has talked to anyone on the West Coast about the impact of this bill. Well, I've talked to them, Mr. Speaker, and I can tell you that they are not happy. They are not happy. If there was ever an Order. example of how the green virus is infesting the Labour Party, then this is it. Mr. Speaker, we have heard Forrest and Bird recently talking about the slow creep of land and going for mining. Well, what about the sprint that's underway to confiscate land that is pro potentially productive? And I'm talking about land in the Buller, 45,000 hectares about to go into national parks there. We are just asking to keep doing what we've been doing as guardians of the land on the West Coast for generations, sir. And where is, the, where is the electorate MP for West Coast Tasman? Nowhere to be seen. In fact, he a, even... A point of order, Dr Megan Woods. Um, Mr Speaker, um, it is not appropriate for a member to question the whereabouts of a member in the House. It's, it's certainly a convention that members don't, and I'm sure this member will not repeat that. Maureen Pugh. Mr Speaker, a Green Party, a Green Labour Party doesn't care about jobs. The National Party does care about jobs, sir. We'll take the pragmatic, the sensible approach because we understand that humans can live, work and play in our environment and still care for, care for it. And we will oppose this bill, sir, vehemently oppose this bill. I, I am at a loss to know why some members from the other side would even be considering this when, when there is so much opportunity over there and so much land available and, and when other cities and towns have clear felled their native forest and we have not and become the conscience for the rest of New Zealand. It is totally inappropriate and I am so pleased to be sitting on this side of the house where we can take a pragmatic approach and look after people and their futures, sir. I certainly oppose this bill. Yeah.
Uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to indicate now that that mic is turned off. Mr Bailey can return if he wishes from the wilderness. <laughs> Dr Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr Speaker.